Hey guys, welcome back to the multiplayer checker tutorial. We're still in the polishing phase, we're really just polishing the game at the moment. And uh, let me just show you the feature we just added. So of course you see the big hot seat button, but let's have a look at the game right now. So I'm going to go under host, it's going to wait for another player. Here's another instance with a different name, connect, and it says Michael versus Dirkmine, which is um, the name of this client here versus the name of that client. We've also had a hot seat over here, which you can just play by yourself. So you just go here. It says that it's the white player's turn. You're moving. It's the black player's turn, and you're allowed to move both. So that's something you might want to add. So in, you know, in case you don't have any anyone to play with, but like a real life person, you can actually play with that real life person turn by turn. So guys, that's what we do today, and without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so the way we've made our game, this should be fairly, fairly easy to do. So, um, we're going to start with the most obvious thing, actually. We are going to start by creating a new button in the menu. So, going to take either connect or host. Let's take connect. And just uh, duplicate that. I'll just put it above here. And I'll call this, say, hot seat. Right, now where is it exactly? It's over here. And I'll just move it up. And this is now going to be hot seat. Now we'll need to find the game manager, open up the, the actual script inside of it. And um, we are going to create a function for that. So all we really want to do if we um, if we start a game without anybody, like without a host or without a connection, is to simply just change the scene, as simple as it is. So public void hot seat button. And instead of that function, we do a load scene, a scene manager dot load scene we load the game scene. And let's just quickly just link that function to our actual uh, button. So I'm on my button. This is connected to the connect button. We're going to change that to hot seat button. Now if we boot the game and we just try this out, we have, of course, an error. We're going to double click on that error and just go from there. So it says uh, client is not defined. So let's just do something here. If client, then is white is equal to client that is host. So that's gonna work. Now, uh, w something we have to do just to make sure that um, you know we can swap player is that in our end turn function, which is right here, at the very end, let's just do it at the very end here. We're gonna do if client exists. So if client, then is white is equal to is not white. This call we had over here, this is pretty much the uh, the only thing that enables hot seat in this case. So let's uh, quickly just try this out. Of course, we're going to have bugs somewhere else. Uh, we'll just find out when it's time. So, all right. So second problem right here is that whenever we start, we're not defined as the white player. So we have kind of a problem here. What we're going to be doing is uh, we're simply going to just, we can write it through code or you can go in the game uh, scene. In the game scene, we are going to toggle on is white. And that's all I'll do here. So no need to do more than that, actually. Uh, let's go for a third error. Do we have a third error? Okay, so when we release a piece, it says no reference exception. That's probably on the send. And yep, that is on the send. So again, if client, if there is a client, we are going to send all of that information. If there is no client, we're simply not going to do that. Okay, back to the actual game. Click here, we can move, and now we have to swap again. Okay, so for some reason now, we're not being swapped to the other side. So what is wrong exactly? Let's have a look. Um, we're still on the white side here. Hmm. Oh, my bad. If the client does not exist here, I just um, totally just reverse those. So if the client does not exist, we are going to swap our current um, player color. Quit. Let's play this now, this works, this works. And uh, pretty much just like that, we've created a hot seat version of our game. So something really, really simple we've done. Um, we're gonna keep on working on this a little bit more because we actually need to know more information. We actually like to see a um, few other things such as maybe some kind of uh, panel that says whose turn it is. 
So let's actually work on that. What I feel like doing is going inside of the game scene. And uh, we don't seem to have any canvas here. We're going to create one really quickly. So create a new panel. And this is going to be the uh, alert window, something like that. Alert window is simply going to be a banner that says something for a certain amount of time, maybe. So I'll just anchor this at the very top. Say it's going to be of width 600, height 150, that's too much, 100. And it's position, say, around uh, here. Right. So on top of that, I'll add a text. And the text is what we'll modify. So maybe good times, one, two, three, versus the combine. Just going to put uh, some temporary text in there so I can actually have a look at this. So it's going to look something like that. Play with the font a little bit. And the font size. Maybe the color as well. And that should actually be it. Okay, so we have our alert window. Now we need to actually reference it in our um, in our checkerboard, actually. Let's do that in the checkerboards. Going to double click on checkerboards, open it up. We're going to create a new public game object. Uh, that this game object is going to be the alert object. Also, just beneath that, a private float. Last alert. Just to keep track of um, the actual time that w this was found. Oh, actually, I've got a better idea than this. We are going to be using a uh, canvas group. So, public canvas group, alert, canvas. And um, the reason I'm using this is because I want to actually reduce the opacity over time. And, and you can do that using a canvas group. Okay, so now at this point, we are going to need... Well, I'd like to have just like a uh, public function that does that. Update, alert. And another public function, public void, um, alert. And then you send in some text. So string text or string message. So what we're going to do in the alert is say something like the uh, alert canvas dot get component. We're getting the text component, which should be at the very exact same place. Actually, no, that's going to be the children. So get component in children of type text. We are going to need to include Unity Engine .ui, so at the very top here. Dot text is going to equal our text that we receive in parameter, and then just after that, we're going to say last alert is equal to time dot time. And we might also need a boolean in here, so let's just go ahead and just um, at the very top here, private bool alert active or something like that. Now with this new field, we're going to go down right here and say alert active is equal to true and now this is where we're going to be doing um, most of the logic so if alert active all right so if we are active now um, we're going to be changing the opacity of the actual canvas now bear with me this next part is a little bit uh, complicated to understand we're going to do a if time that time minus the last alert is bigger than say um, Let's say we want to have an alert that is 2 seconds long. I'm going to say 1.5 here. So if it's bigger than 1.5, then I want to start reducing the opacity until it is bigger than, say, 2.5 in this case. When it's bigger than 2.5, we're going to say alert active. Alert active is equal to false. Okay, sorry, time to time minus last alert. So over here in this if statement, I am going to just uh, reduce the opacity until that until this uh, section here is reached. Then when this is reached, alert active is equal to false, and we're not updating this anymore. So the way I'm going to do this is by doing a um, alert canvas that alpha is it alpha? Yep, I believe it is alpha. Is equal to um, time dot time minus last alert which is going to give you 1.5 at first, so we'll do all of that, minus 1.5. Okay, so now we have update alert, let's just put it somewhere here in the update. 
and at the very start of our game, let's go ahead and just um, let's just alert something. So alert, hello world, just to give this a try. Okay, so now on the board, you are going to find the uh, canvas, the alert canvas, which is not there just yet. We need to add it. So go here, add a canvas group to um, our window. And now here's the alpha I was talking about. You also have to disable the block raycast and also interactable. We don't want to do any of those. So this does not actually block the way of our clicks or anything like that. Right. So at this point, um, we need to drag and drop our alert canvas. Oops. And then we should be pretty much good to go. Have a look at this. Hopefully it works. We're going to start in a hot seat session. It says hello world. And uh, we've got it, but backward, basically. What's pretty cool, though, um, what's really easy to do a fade in, fade out using this method. So we've got this backward. We have to just invert that. So we'll do. Uh, can we do actually one minus all of this? I wonder if this is going to work. Let's try it out. And it is, it actually looks quite good. Okay, so at the very beginning, instead of getting the hello world message, I'd like to get uh, the black team versus white team. Now, it's going to change depending on uh, what are the names of the player. But if we are in a single player session, what I am going to do at this point is, uh, let's just split that really quick. If that's a client, I mean, if there is a client, you're gonna say alert. And then inside of here, we're going to be putting the names of the player. And if there is no player here, if there's no, uh, if we're in a hot seat, actually, we're going to say white player starts or something like that. Or white players turn really up to you, to be honest. Um, and now we need to get a list of client. So can we actually do that here? Client dot list or player list. I believe what we could do, however, is uh, go in our client, make our list of game client public, and then go back in the checkerboard, say client dot player list at the index zero dot name plus, and then you do something like versus and client player at the index one dot name. And then you get the name of the second player. Let's give this a try. In hot seat at first. Well, actually, I'm going to build this really quickly. So building this to this very little executable here. We are going to host. So on this one, uh, connect. Go here. It says host versus client, which is the name of that. Um, well, client is the name of this, and host is the name of that. We could have changed the name, and you know, the modification would have been done. Now let's run hot seat. It says white player stun, and the white player start. Oh, and I forgot one more thing though. Um, if we're playing too fast, as you can tell, it just doesn't show up. Well, actually, it doesn't matter if you're playing too fast or not. We're really never resetting the uh, opacity of the group. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going at the alert function this alert function and we're going to say alert canvas dot alpha is equal to one here so it actually you know it just pops again um, at the beginning and then you can actually be spammed by that at the very top all right guys so I'm going to end here for now um, now we have a single player mode which was quite easy to implement to be honest since we've made our game um, I mean our, our code is kind of clean so it was really easy to just have a single player on top of our multiplayer so that's done. We also have a little alert system that grabs the name of the player and it just says the uh, the little versus message, which I like quite a lot. Uh, we might need better, you know, UI, better image as panel because these one, they don't really look too good. But uh, we can look into that a little bit later on. Right now, I'm going to end the video and I hope you guys liked. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you learned something, please just leave me a like on the video. It really helps out quite a lot. And if you want to just um, check out the Facebook page, check out the Patreon page, just check out what we do here on the channel in general. And guys, uh, thanks a lot for watching again, and I will see you in the next one.